Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in episode one of Garbage Time Sports. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Joe Shad, the owner and founder of Garbage Time Sports. This is episode one. This is February 5th, a Monday, and I just wanted to run down the sports stories that I thought were intriguing today, give my take on them, all right? Let's start at the top with Patrick Mahomes Sr., getting arrested for a DUI. But actually, let's not talk about this. Because here at Garbage Time Sports, we don't talk about things that don't actually affect the outcome of games, all right? So Patrick Mahomes Sr., it doesn't affect anything. Patrick Mahomes is still going to be there. All the Chiefs players are going to be there. Patrick Mahomes Sr. doesn't call plays. He doesn't make substitutions. He does nothing. He has no effect on the game. So we are not going to talk about Patrick Mahomes Sr. And we're not going to talk about anything that doesn't actually affect the sporting world here at Garbage Time Sports. That's the guarantee. That's something that's going to differentiate us from other platforms, other creators. That is something that we are going to stick to. That is something that's going to be very important to us. We talk sports. Everybody else can talk about all the other stuff that surrounds the sport. No, we talk about sports, all right? And sports are what's important. Sports are what guys love. Sports is what we love here with Garbage Time, and that is going to be us going forward no matter what, all right? So you can book that all the time. Here's our first actual story. A lot of stuff starting to come come around the NFL draft that's happening in April. A lot of stuff starting to circulate, a lot of stories. Let's start with the Senior Bowl this past weekend, all right? The Senior Bowl MVP was Spencer Rattler, okay? Spencer Rattler, really weird college career. He's like the only guy to not work under Lincoln Riley. He's like the only quarterback that didn't work under Lincoln Riley, which is shocking because you look at Jalen Hurts, you look at Baker Mayfield, Obviously, you look at Kyler Murray, you look at Caleb Williams coming out this year, probable number one pick. All those guys just work under Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley has had Heisman winner after Heisman winner. Everybody works there. Spencer Radler did it, which was very concerning. So he transfers to South Carolina, and everybody just forgets about him, all right? But quietly over in the SEC, he puts together a couple of really nice years with a couple of really big moments. I think we all remember that Saturday night game where he went out and crushed Tennessee. Um I think over the past two years, he's shown a lot of what NFL scouts, NFL coaches, NFL GMs look for, all right? Number one, he made the most of not a super talented team, okay? That was like a concern with C.J. Stroud. Obviously, they were wrong about him, but C.J. Stroud was surrounded by talent. Great offensive line, great weapons. How good was C.J. Stroud, or did he just have talent everywhere? Spencer Radler played really well without that talent being around. And he also showed a ton of toughness because he didn't have a great offensive line. That dude got beat up in the SEC. He had a tendency of just staying in the pocket until the last possible second, delivering the ball and getting smoked. And that's something that translates really, really well in the NFL. That's why a lot of the great quarterbacks always came from small schools, did not come from traditional powerhouses, right? Big Ben Roethlisberger, Miami of Ohio, Drew Brees, Purdue. Whenever you get the snot kicked out of you for a while in college, that builds that toughness, and that is more realistic to the NFL standards, right? The Alabama quarterbacks don't usually make it. Tua Tagovailoa struggles so much if he's under pressure just a little bit because at Alabama, he never had to deal with pressure. He never got sacked. He never got hurried. He always had the best five offensive linemen in the country, it felt like. All right, but Patrick Mahomes over at Texas Tech running for his life, improvising, trying to score, trying to make big plays, that translates to the NFL better than these quarterbacks that are set up perfectly in college, and it's easy to see. So Spencer Rattler kind of fits that profile. I think he has the potential to be a real steal in this draft because everybody knows that that he has the talent, all right? Very high recruit, all the Elite 11 stuff. I'm not saying anybody really liked him, but the talent was there. And then he showed the toughness, and he showed that he can elevate others, elevate not a great team at South Carolina to be something more than they were supposed to be. South Carolina was never great under him. That's not what I'm saying. But I think Spencer Radler could prove to be a very serviceable quarterback 
in the next level at the NFL. All right. So that was the number one takeaway from the Senior Bowl for me. Spencer Rattler made some noise. Spencer Rattler looked really good. And look for Spencer Rattler not to climb up to the first round, maybe not even the second round, but maybe the third round, okay, a day three steal. Just Spencer Rattler could make some noise. Look for him to have a big preseason game or two next year and make some noise and maybe get a little buzz going into this NFL draft, right? Other draft news. Caleb Williams, some speculation that he might not want to play for the Bears. You have the Washington Commanders hiring Cliff Kingsbury, his former offensive offensive coordinator, to maybe trade up to number one and go get Caleb Williams. All right. I don't think the Bears can trade it. I just don't see how or why the Bears would trade the number one pick. If you think this dude is as a generational of a guy as everybody else is saying, as everybody thinks, then you cannot trade him because a great quarterback, a top five quarterback in the league is priceless because it doesn't matter if everything else fits. If you have that top five quarterback on a rookie salary, you are golden for four years. All right. And that's actually kind of why this Super Bowl is so entertaining this year with the 49ers and the Chiefs. It's almost like a battle for the NFL soul. It's like, hey, is all you need the great quarterback and a couple of weapons? All right. And then you can go young everywhere else and patch it together and make it work. Or can you really win with any quarterback? Can you win with a seventh-round quarterback if your team is loaded and if your coach is on point? You know, this is kind of the Super Bowl that you're trying to give all the other teams in the NFL hope that they can put it together. Because if the Chiefs win it again, it's just like, man, you got to have one of those dudes to win a Super Bowl. And traditionally, that's been the case. You know, you got your Trent Delfer, you got your Joe Flacco types that have won Super Bowls before, but you got to have a dude. It's been Mahomes. It's been Brady, Manning, Drew Brees, Matt Stafford's a dude. Joe Burrow got there. He's obviously a dude, right? So NFL history says you've got to have a dude, but the 49ers are trying to prove that wrong a little bit, okay? But anyways, back to Caleb Williams. The Bears have to take him. I mean, what would Washington have to offer in order to get Caleb Williams, to just go one to two? Because Drake May is also a very, very good prospect, right? For starters, I mean, they'd have to give them the second pick, right? I think they would have to give them their first rounder next year, okay? I think they would have to give them the Montez Sweat pick back, okay? So that's pick 34 this year. So you're looking at two, 34, and a first rounder next year at a bare minimum. My guess is they would also want, like, Terry McLaurin or or Dotson, right, like another weapon, uh, maybe another first round pick after that. So we're talking like two additional firsts, a second, and a Pro Bowl wide receiver at minimum. Like that is the minimum. Okay, I'm at least picking up the phone for this offer. But still, if you think Caleb Williams is that guy, there's no way you can give it up. You just can't give it up. So I think all of the speculation that Caleb Williams won't go to the Bears. I think it's dumb, short of Caleb Williams just saying, I refuse to play for the Bears. And then we get into an Eli Manning situation and all of that good stuff. So that would be a lot of fun if Caleb Williams would actually do it. I'm not sure he's actually going to do it. The Bears are a historically great franchise. They're a popular franchise. I think that would be a great place for Caleb to play. I think the Bears are building something. They looked a lot better this year towards the end of the year. The defense got going. Eberflus kept his job. I think the Bears are building to something. And getting Caleb Williams, resetting that rookie scale QB, and then getting a second-round pick for Justin Fields, that seems like the more correct course of action. All right? And then one more draft thing I heard today was that the Minnesota Vikings will be aggressive to go get a quarterback, all right? What does that mean? Does that mean they're trying to get to number eight in the draft and go get Bo Nix? Or are they trying to godfather offer somebody like the Patriots and go get Jane Daniels, go get Drake May, who's ever left of those top three, all right? What does... What do the Vikings really have to give up, all right? Their defense isn't talented. They have a couple of talented receivers in Hawkinson. Uh, Running back, nothing fantastic. Their O-line is always a mess. So I'm not really sure 
unless they're just throwing draft picks after draft pick to go get one of those top three picks. I'm not sure the Vikings have the ammunition to do it. They don't want to give up Jefferson, don't want to give up Addison, don't want to give up Hawkinson. Um, so I'm not sure if the Vikings are, even have the possibility of getting into that top three. But do they want to make sure to go get Bo Nix, go get Michael Penix? Are they thinking J.J. McCarthy? If Do they want to just move up to make sure to get one of those next three guys? I think that would be smart for the Vikings. I think that would be the correct move. you got to cut bait with Kirk Cousins. You finally have the opportunity to do it. You need a reset, okay? The defense lacks talent. The offensive weapons are there to help out a young QB. Keep Brian Flores on the defensive side of the ball because he really turned around that defense later in the year. The Vikings are fine, but you cannot go back to Kirk Cousins here. I agree with them that they need to go get a quarterback, but they do not need to go godfather somebody and just go get one of those top three picks. I think that would be a bad franchise move. I don't think they're in the position to move up that much, especially with the top three teams being hungry at quarterback themselves. All right? So that is your NFL draft coverage for the day. Those are the three stories that kind of stuck out to me today. Those are the three stories that were interesting to me, at least. All right? That was a really bad transition. This is episode one. We're going to keep it going. All right? Some NBA talk. Something that I heard today that absolutely shocked me. Ryan Rosillo came out and said that he thinks the Clippers are going to win the West. And to be honest, I think so too. Now, everybody needs to understand that the Clippers are not a good health bet. But if the Clippers are healthy, if the Clippers are healthy, if Kawhi Leonard is healthy, I'll still take that guy over anybody else in the league in the playoff series, all right? No disrespect to Jokic, Giannis, Curry, LeBron. If Kawhi Leonard is fully healthy, there is no one I would rather take. He is the best get-a-stop, get-a-bucket guy in the league, and then he's surrounded by a former MVP one. Russell Westbrook off the bench, I'll take that all day when he's used right. And then Paul George is a fantastic player who is somehow undervalued, okay? I know he doesn't have the awards that stacks up with all the great guys in the league, but Paul George is just a really dang good basketball player that you want on your team. So Kawhi has a lot of talent around him. he got James Harden playing properly, running the show. You need James Harden to keep his head on straight. Paul George needs to stay healthy, and Kawhi himself needs to stay healthy. But if the Clippers stay healthy, who is stopping them? Okay, and the answer is the Denver Nuggets, and the answer is the Boston Celtics. But they don't have to worry about the Celtics. We're just talking about the West right now. The Nuggets, of course, could figure it out, and the Nuggets just make it all happen, make it all go away, because Jokic is just that fantastic, and I'm not going to dispute that in any way, shape, or form. All I'm saying is if these Clippers stay healthy, they're now 26-5 and in their last 31 games, I'm taking Kawhi over anybody when he's fully healthy. All right? I'll, bucket for bucket, he will score with Jokic. He might even stop Jokic a few times by himself because he's that bit great of a defender. He has that big of hands. Oh, how many times have you heard that? got to love Kawhi's hands. Ah. Uh, yeah, so I'm not excited about the Clippers possibly winning the West, but I think the Clippers have a real shot at it, and it's thanks to Kawhi Leonard finally being healthy, all right? So Monday, February 5th, we are a few days out from the NBA trade deadline, and the Chicago Bulls still have not made a move. The Chicago Bulls have still not done anything, and it just makes you want to rip your hair out because you're like, Why? What are you protecting, Chicago? What are you trying to hold on to with this group? This group has a lot of fun names, and whenever everybody's playing right, they're a fun team to watch, but they are going nowhere, all right? The middle of the pack is where you don't want to be in the NBA, so it is time to move on. I would trade everybody. Get rid of Caruso. Get rid of Vucevic. Get rid of DeRozan. Levine is out for the season. You probably can't trade him. I would keep Colby White, keep Patrick Williams, all right? You got some two young guys, really talented. See what Colby can do whenever the team is completely his. Let's see what happens. Get some draft picks. I know this draft isn't great. Maybe get some 2025 draft capital, all right? And just turn the page. Turn the page. Maybe you can get a few young, up-and-coming guys for those guys, 
right? DeRozan, I think you could demand something back for him from a contender that could actually excite the fan base. But this sitting in the middle, it doesn't do anything for you. I understand Chicago is very popular. They want to put out a product that is at least watchable. I think I saw yesterday that they still lead the league in attendance this year somehow with how rocky it's been. I just don't see why Chicago would hold this together. I don't know what they're protecting, all right? They should have gotten rid of Zach Levine when he had some value early, early on in the year. But the bright side's Colby White. Colby White has been a revelation this year. Just absolutely broke out, funny enough, whenever Zach Levine went down. And he's been a lot of fun to watch. He's was kind of thought of as a lottery bust, but here he is breaking out 23, 22 points a game this year and just a great guy to watch. So get rid of Vucevic, trade Caruso for what you can get. They want, they want like the same kind of package that OG and Nobi got from the Knicks. All right. So they want a first round pick and a decent, solid player. I think that's reasonable. I think him and OG are kind of on the same level. I think OG is a little better, but not by much. And he's not as valuable to a contender as he would be to a smaller market. So I think Caruso on a contending team could offer like two first rounders. I think that's not insane to say. All right. And that's kind of what the Bulls are looking for. All right, last topic. The World Cup announced the 2026 World Cup final will take place in New York at MetLife Stadium. I don't remember who I saw this tweeted from, but I thought it was hilarious. We are really going to put the world's most valuable ACLs in MetLife Stadium. The home of every lower body injury ever, it seems like. Always happens in New York. And we are going to put guys that are making millions and millions and millions of dollars worldwide on MetLife Stadium turf. I I I know. I saw today that they have to have play on grass. That's a FIFA rule, and MetLife is going to accommodate it. But still, I would have chosen a different venue. I think the international players should be pissed. That's met life. Um, we're putting the world's most valuable ACLs in MetLife Stadium. That just seems like a dumb move all around. All right. So that is what intrigued me in the sports world today. Hope you enjoyed this episode. This is just episode one. I will get better at this. We will get better at this. I look forward to doing this again tomorrow, maybe. Uh, yeah, signing off. Joe Shad. Garbage Time Sports. See ya.